Solar engineering is like chemotherapy. No one wants it. But we all want the ability to do chemo and to understand its risks should we find ourselves with dangerous cancer. How long does it last up there? The lifetimes are years. What, years? There's a couple years. And then it what, precipitates out or? Yeah, that's correct. No toxic side effects? We know of. The thing we always wonder about is the unknown unknown. Yeah. So if you're thinking about, say, the acidification, it's clear that's not a problem. There's several studies that showed that. Right. But of course, the concern here is with so little research, there may be some unknown unknown that comes out of that field that bites us. My name's Mike Murphy. I'm a filmmaker in from Los Angeles. We're covering an issue called geoengineering. Okay. Thanks, okay. guys. Senator, quick you. question about the issue of the geoengineering. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. And wondering if uh, you were supportive of geoengineers' proposals of spraying 10 to 20 million tons of aluminum into the atmosphere. I should really get a briefing paper on it before I get an opinion. Oh, not a pro Are you aware of the issue? Not, at, not completely. No. At all? Because, okay. Um, do you have a letter from constituents and people have concerns? Yeah, what's the... What, We're making a documentary about the... I don't know, you guys have credentials to be here? Yes, yes, we do. We, we pass through endowed security as well. Endowed by our creator. So think so. Please don't touch me. Please don't, please don't touch me. Your property. You're just, you're just, you're, you're lying. No, why? What, what, what did we lie? What did we lie about, sir? No, we're not. What are we lying about? Lying about what? Okay. That was a little unusual, huh? I haven't heard that, no. Okay. Um... You're not aware of it? And it appears that these programs have already been deployed. You know, I haven't looked at that proposal, and so, you know, uh, why don't you let me review it? I, I can do that. Are you aware of? Actually, I'm going to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and get sure. that. I will take a look at this. And, 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 uh, and I will uh, act uh, accordingly. General, this. Oh, I'm sorry. This program, this openly covert program of the aerosol spraying, stratospheric aerosol spraying, geoengineering, using uh, tons of aluminum, spraying it up in the sky. No idea what you're talking okay. about. Commonly called chemtrail surf. When when you were the head of NEMA, did you see the uh, the aerosol trails? Mike Murphy, filmmaker in Los Angeles. Hi, sir. And we're covering an issue called geoengineering, and wanted to know if you're supportive of geoengineers' proposals. <laughs> Congressman? Hey, Congressman. I'm wondering if you're supportive of geoengineers' proposals, which is dumping 10 to 20 million tons of aluminum into the atmosphere? I'm familiar with that. Pardon? I'm familiar with the uh. Okay. Um, Can you take an appointment from my office? Um, I, I'm not supportive. I, 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 I haven't looked at it. Uh, <laughs> So have, have you heard of the issue? Because it's becoming uh, uh, mainstream and public, and it's, there are actually congressional committees which are being formed to talk about these programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I think when we drop anything into the atmosphere, we should know prior to the effect of that, right? Yes. And, and, and if we don't have the knowledge as, as to what the effect will be, we shouldn't do it. I think there are four different options for thinking about deployment of geoengineering. Uh, the first one would be we just ban it. I would argue that one does not want to get too firm a restriction in place on small-scale studies early on because it'll tie the science hands. I think what the science community ought to be trying to do is say, you do small-scale stuff inside this space, and it's a scientific question what that space ought to be. There shouldn't be a lot of oversight and restriction. Congressman? Excuse me. Hi, I'm Mike Murphy from Los Angeles covering an issue called geoengineering. These guys are running from the uh, geoengineering issue. I wonder why. I'd have to talk to my staff. I don't know what your, your the details on that are. Have, have anyone made you aware of the issue? or? Sir? Did uh, your committee talk about geoengineering last November? Are you in support of those proposals? I'd love to give you a paper. Which? Uh, geoengineering? Do you know nothing about the geoengineering issue? Don't know about it. 
They call it geoengineering, but... Uh, yeah, I never heard of it. I, it's nothing I've ever heard anything about. I mean, when, when we looked up in the air today outside, we see we saw this stuff, stuff going on. Quickly, have you heard of geoengineering? No. The proposal is to shoot 10 million tons of metals into the air. This committee, Science and Technology, no. covered no. it for the first time. No. No, I've never heard of it. So, we were very concerned. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. We spoke with uh, Congresswoman Watson's office, and her press secretary, Ms. White, is, was familiar with uh, Representative Kucinich's uh, Space Preservation Act, which mentioned chemtrails and the weaponization of the atmosphere in space, and then it was pressured uh, to be taken off of, off of the, off the uh, bill. Did you, did you see the aerosol spraying going on today over the Capitol? Geoengineering carries with it a tremendous range of uncertainties, ethical and political concerns, and the potential for catastrophic environmental side effects. He, he's, uh, he's not one to do interviews very often, okay. uh, so uh, not unless we usually really pressure him into it. Okay. So, uh, so don't, you know, all that is don't hold your breath. As chairman of the Committee of Jurisdiction, I feel a responsibility to begin a public dialogue and develop a record on geoengineering. We want to know if you're supportive of their measures by spraying 10 to 20 million tons of aluminum no. into the atmosphere? No, no I don't think we, have to have, we need to have more research. Okay. And about the issue of current deployment, there's literally a mountain of evidence that uh, many people believe proves the deployment of these programs. Any knowledge of that? No, I don't, there's certainly not a mountain of evidence. Uh, but I, I do support research into the uh, into geoengineering, and I also uh, support looking into the international governance of that. Okay. I hope you know anybody that has studied it knows, at least I think, that it's a radical proposal, and, and I hope we don't have to use it. But there may come that point in time where we do. Now, if we could provide you with the evidence that suggests that these programs are and have been ongoing, would you be willing to address this publicly? We, we, we've had about three or four meeting, uh, hearings on it. We have addressed them publicly. Well, it, not not about the proposals, current but about deployment. the current deployment of these programs. Uh, Citizens, I, 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 don't, I don't support the current deployment. I think we need to have more research, and they have consequences that go beyond one nation. And so I think that uh, there needs to be governance for that. Governance is not simply an issue of deployment, but governance before deployment, in terms particularly of large-scale scientific fieldwork. I concede that um, on this subject and in general, it's not popular to talk about global rules. And when these people started talking about uh, the need for UN Security Council oversight, a supranational environmental security enforcement with a strong mandate by the UN, you know, it, uh, it really is clear that they're looking for a global power behind the manipulation of the environment. But I do think it needs to be sort of an international uh, kind of cre uh, treaty that does tie and bind all nations into a common fate. It is a common fate. And unfortunately, it's not just big governments that could do this. It is small governments. It is <coughs> billionaires probably could figure, I'm going to save the world all by myself, and I won't bother to mention it. How do we decide when there's a planetary emergency? Whose hand is on the thermostat? How do we decide when to start it? There's no way to do that right now. And what if we do start doing it? And then by some uh, problem with uh, the technology or with the will, uh, the, we can no longer do it. In a year or two, the aerosols will come out of the atmosphere and temperatures will shoot up at a rate much faster than it's going up now. And it's that rate of change that's hard for us to adapt to. So once we start it, we'll be sort of locked into doing it for a long, long time. And so that, and with, with basically no end in sight. Boeing would pursue this to make a profit, right? I mean, the financial motivation to do this. Um, let's see. So let me not speak for Boeing. <laughs> is that allowed? Okay. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Um, no, but if, but it's someday if, if the U.S. is going to decide to do this stuff, uh, they're going to turn look to a company who can do it, and you want to be positioned. Boeing would rather be uh, get it than Lockheed Martin. Um, so certainly, uh, we have an industrial base that helps the country uh, take on technologies and uh, large-scale challenges like national defense. And uh, we do that both for a profit motive as well as, uh, um, I think, uh, as a national uh, service. So. I think it would be truly disastrous if 
you know, we discovered a few years from now that uh, there was a black program that some uh, government had stood up to sort of learn on the, on the quiet how to do this. It's pretty clear you can cool the planet, but you will not and cannot bring it back to exactly the same climate state you started with. So you may or may not, and I expect we'll have a lot of back and forth about how useful it is to ameliorate the risks of climate change. I think there's a good evidence it probably is useful, but we don't know. But it certainly can't get you back to exactly the climate you started with. I think everybody agrees with that. Do you think you'll see deployment in our lifetime? I, I'll let me say I hope not. Al? I would agree. I hope yeah. not. I, I hope I agree. not. OK. <laughs> I see this as something like an evacuation plan, uh, you know, that you, that you, uh, you know, build big dikes, maybe that's the emissions reduction to try to keep the flood from wiping you out, but that if you should, that flood should come, that you'd like a plan uh, for, for what to do in the event of that catastrophe. So I see these options more as a catastrophic response option and not uh, as a way to reduce risk of everyday climate change. You would advocate mitigating consumption of beef uh, as, as a means of accomplishing your objective? Uh, yes. How would you suggest going about that? You can't, uh, I, I don't, I don't add, uh, I mean, it's your job to decide what to tax and what not to tax. Obviously, if you wanted to people to behave differently, you give them incentives and disincentives for behavior. But I'm sure that's the answer you wanted to hear, uh, Mr. Smith. <laughs> if only my time uh, had not expired. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Because there's literally aluminum and bearing contamination found around the world, right. believed to be from these programs. Like, look, today over the Capitol, it looks like they're deploying some type of aerosol. Did you see it? No, I didn't, but good to see you. In a James Bond scenario, some rogue rich guy puts some airplanes in the air and seeds the clouds. What is to prevent that? Okay, are you aware of the issue? You do it through the. Are you in support of those proposals? What is your take? I don't know anything about it. I got a chair here. Okay, we'll give you a letter on that. Yeah, this is a letter from constituents. Okay, great. Excellent. And, and many people believe that these programs have already been deployed because mass contamination has been found. Uh, geoengineering programs, stratospheric. Yeah. Spray, spraying from airplanes. So we're, what, what is happening, people from around the world are finding contamination. Let me take care of this and I'll talk to you Thank you very much. We see that um, even though we might make the average temperature of the planet about right, the rainfall patterns change some from today. And some places become warmer and some places become cooler. So uh, there are going to be winners and losers in this geoengineering activity if we were to do it. But nevertheless, as David has said, uh, there are reasons why we might consider doing it. Many people are deeply concerned about it because of the toxicity of aluminum, and it has been addressed to Congress and various committees. Would you take a look at a letter from some of your constituents addressing the concerns? Oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, can I give you a, a letter from constituents? Are you aware of their proposals of dumping? Gotcha. Thanks. Well, I'm not familiar with it, so. Uh... I don't know what they're doing. Okay. <laughs> um, well, geoengineers are proposing uh, just that, dumping aluminum and barium into the atmosphere. Well, uh, if we do that, aluminum is a precious metal we can use. Well, the stated goal is to actually cool the planet. However, uh, there's a... <laughs> Sounds strange. Right, right, ex exactly. So they're proposing dumping these metals into the air uh, to block the sun, essentially. Um, we're here to find out what uh, members of Congress well, are I hope aware. we would have a strong hearing on that before we I, decide to do that. I would hope so. And there's Thanks. plenty of evidence that not only suggests that these programs have been deployed because we're finding contamination of aluminum and barium on the rain, uh, snow, and soil. Okay, thank you. Thank you.